Good morning, I hip newsers. We have such a fun episode today because it is crazy town, Donald Trump. So he did a press conference, which I'm going to put that in air quotes, press conference, because there was absolutely no news. But he did it from his country club at Bedminster, where he has buried his first wife, allowed weeds to overgrow to get a tax break. So I just want to remind everyone what the setting is. Then for the first time, I thought, you know, he seems kind of calm. Then he goes into on and on and on about Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and Joe Biden. Is this the press conference where he had this weird show and tell with groceries? It is that press conference. I did like how they placed the Fruit Loops right in the background of him. I thought that was, you know, ironic. But some of the interesting things that I've pulled out is I have never seen someone being such a titty baby about being called weird. So I want to <laughs> show you this video. Uh, I think I'm entitled to personal attacks. I don't have a lot of respect for her. I don't have a lot of respect for her intelligence. And I think she'll be a terrible president. Okay, this is what he says in response to being called weird. Let's just go through, walk down memory lane. Let's talk about Lion Ted, Crooked Hillary, Ron DeSanctimonious, Crooked Joe. I mean, there are so many hits that he has bullying and demeaning people, but you call him weird and he gets butt hurt and he actually says out loud, I'm entitled because I don't respect her and I don't think she's smart. What a dick. I don't think truer words have ever come out of Donald Trump's mouth than I'm entitled. As he stands <laughs> at his country club, feigning that he and Melania are out buying bacon and Cheerios. Right. I mean, it, is, it is unbelievable. But you know what? I had a conversation with a woman yesterday who I don't know super well. And it became very clear to me that she was trying to pretend to me that she was a moderate. But when we started talking about politics, because I told her we were going to the DNC, she only gets her news from Fox News. She was very shocked when I told her that Trump policies were damaging to minorities and LGBTQ plus people. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. It's amazing how effective right wing media is at getting people to move the goalposts morally to support this right. man. Okay. And then we all know there's nothing Donald Trump loves more than being on the cover of Time magazine. So this with Kamala Harris, the gorgeous drawing of her, and it says her moment on the cover. He is having the biggest temper tantrum. This is like the fifth day in a row that he's brought it up. Play the clip, Seth. I think you're going to see something. But right now, even not knowing her, and with all of the, like the cover of Time magazine, <laughs> they didn't put a picture. They got a great artist to do it. What was that all about? You know, what was that all about? I'll tell you what that's all about, Donna Belector. It's all about the fact that she is the nominee for the Democratic Party. And on the front page of Drudge Report right now, conservative media aggregate is a picture of Kamala Harris. And yes, everybody knows her last name. Yes. <laughs> And it says simply 53% right. under it. And then above the fold, he has all these glowing articles about the Biden-Harris economy and how it's booming and how the stock market's booming right now. Okay, so this is one thing that has just really, I mean, Donald Trump's treatment of veterans is deplorable. It always has been. So this is what he said about the Congressional Medal of Freedom just yesterday. When we gave Miriam the Presidential Medal of Freedom, that's the highest award you can get as a civilian. It's the equivalent of the Congressional Medal of Honor, but civilian version. It's actually much better because everyone gets the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's soldiers. They're either in very bad shape because they've been hit so many times by bullets or they're dead. So he sees battle wounds as a detriment. Yes. 
And, you know, we know that he said this multiple times because his former advisors um, and cabinet members and generals that advised him said this man has complete disdain and doesn't understand military service. He associates those people as being losers or suckers and openly opines. Why would they do that? Right. And here it is again. I mean, he just he confirms everything that everybody that worked around him said all the time. But again, this does not get any coverage on Fox in the right wing media echo chambers. And they allow this man to appear mainstream in a lot of Americans minds. Absolutely. And the fear mongering, they perpetuate that. One thing that is so horrifying is that he gets up there and he just rambles. I mean, he's not talking or talking about policy. He's just rambling. Pumps, this is what psychiatrists call flight (laughs) of ideas. And I'm dead serious. No, you're right. Google it. It is called flight of ideas and it is a sign of mental illness. It's absolutely a sign of mental illness and the lies. Like I'm really struggling with how do you fact check somebody? That lies. So in a 60 minute press conference, which has always run over because his flight of ideas take him longer and he just drones on, you would have to have 100 plus people fact checking in real time because so many lies come out in such a short amount of time. And one lie yesterday that he got caught in was he was talking about, well, if Kamala Harris is elected, the stock market's going to crash. It's going to be worse than 1929. And the Chiron on Fox News showed that the stock market is at one of the highest levels, having a banner day. And so they immediately had to take it off because it proved in real time that he is a liar. That shows you how much disdain the corporation of Fox has for its viewers, that we are not going to let you see or hear the truth. And basically, you know, if you were to this relationship that the media has with Trump, that Trump has with people. If you were to go to see a therapist, everybody would say, don't be in a relationship with somebody who gaslights you. Right. So that would be Fox News to its viewers. This is a toxic relationship for you. You're not living in reality. To Donald Trump and his supporters, any therapist, line up 200 of them, 1,000 of them, would say, this man is abusing you. That's right. This is emotional abuse. He's lying to you. He's gaslighting you. It is remarkable how many people are primed to be in such toxic, dysfunctional relationships and how their ability to critically think doesn't click in. I, I, it doesn't matter what news channel I'm watching or what commentator I'm listening to. Rarely do I 100% am like all cylinders, yes. Right. You know, you always have a little nuance that your mind might think, well, I kind of think this or think that. Not with Fox and Trumpers. It is whatever he says is, you know, that is the end all be all. Those are the facts. We morally move to support this man. And you know what they call that? A cult. (laughs) I mean, it's just as plain as it It is is on my face. It's true. And no press conference would be complete without bringing out one of the hits of Donald Trump regarding wind energy. He's just a fucking nut. Play the clip. Instead of playing this game with wind that is ruining everything, killing all your birds, destroying the fields, all these gorgeous fields, you got windmills all over the place and you have birds. You want to see a bird cemetery? Just go under a windmill. You see thousands of birds dead. The bald eagle, if you kill an eagle, they put you in jail for years. And yet these windmills knock them out like nothing. This is exactly what I'm talking about. America's inability, not all Americans, but a large percentage, inability to critically think. Number one, nobody believes that this man gives a shit about birds or eagles (laughs) or fields or nature. Or the American people, for that matter. Nobody believes that, number one. Number two, the purpose of doing wind energy is to curb carbon emissions, which in the long haul affect all species, even beyond birds, because the climate is warming 
and water temperatures are going to rise and we're going to see start to see extinctions in certain species that affects our entire world echo chamber. It's just the ability that somebody who watches that, they don't have the facts, the critical thinking skills to play the tape through. Hmm. I've seen these images of all this black smoke coming out of these, you know, oil wells and all of this stuff. And then you see a wind turbine that they can't piece these things together. And it's not like we all have these things in our hands all the time. Right. Information is available out there. It's just amazing the inability for him and for his followers to critically think. And it's just so astounding that there is an entire news network that is full-blown propaganda, gaslighting, lying liars, and these people just hook up to it. I mean, they are freebasing Fox News 24-7. And you can tell the minute you talk to one of these Fox Newsers, you can tell immediately because they're like, I mean, what's going on with the border? Right. And it's like, Okay, just a little recap. Your president didn't want to fix the border. Former President Trump tanked the most conservative border bill in 50 years because he wanted the border and migration, illegal migration, to be part of his platform for his campaign. He doesn't give a shit how many people are coming in. And here's what's so dangerous about that. When you look at the formation of the Nazi party, they identified a common enemy for everyone to unite around. And what they're doing here is they're identifying a common enemy and they're all united around migrants and immigrants. And I want to remind everybody that a lot of Trump supporters are overtly religious. And as somebody who's not religious, I'm always fascinated at how dehumanizing they are to people that are seeking asylum and that are refugees and the lack of care and compassion that they have for these people. They immediately use language that completely dehumanizes them. But while we're talking about this shit show that was his, you know, show and tell with groceries and bird, you know, feigning that he gives a shit about nature and birds and all that other bullshit that he did, behind him are a very organized group of dangerous people with nefarious ideas. And a video leaked online of a Project 2025 uh, author, and he said, there are people like me that have his trust that will be able to get him in the position that we're at. The relationships will be there. The trust level will be there. He further says that they have prepared hundreds of executive orders that can be used to enact mass firings and deportation of migrants living in the country illegal illegally and he would have no problem whatsoever funneling this material to Trump. Absolutely not because they are hand in glove. Project 2025 is so dangerous. Not only it it doesn't even want to mention that climate change is an issue. Abolish the Department of Education. Consolidate executive branch power. No rights for women. It's unbelievable. And they want to do away with protections to, that help uh, LGBTQ plus people, women, minorities apply for housing, apply for jobs. They want to do away with anti-discrimination measures. When they say DEI, they see it as um, some sort of affirmative action situation. The way I see it is we want people to have the same. We, right. DEI is about making sure that everybody has the same opportunity as white men. But I'll tell you what, these people and their dangerous ideas, their ambition is impressive because they have played a very long game and they have completely redrawn the map in the Supreme Court, which has now imposed so much pain to women in this country. One other thing they've kind of starting to get successful at is we played this yesterday where they're saying, oh, the Republicans didn't ban abortion, right? They just sent it back to the states. And we need to remind everyone and women listening to this show and watching this show, they sent it back to the states so it could be banned. And that's step one. Step two is a nationwide abortion ban. 
Step three is criminalizing it. They have been very crystal clear about the way they want to do this. They just realize, oh, it's not popular right now. So listen, Trump's public, publicly going to tell everybody he is not with Project 2025. But behind the scenes, we're doing all of our work. We have everything ready. We're going to put everything on his desk and he's going to do it. And why is he going to do it? Because he's lazy and he'd rather be on social media than talking about policy. This man doesn't give a shit about policy. He doesn't give a shit about the American people. He genuinely cares about this Time magazine cover. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. He cares about being called weird. Yeah. And he cares about who's on the cover of Time magazine. That's how petty he is. That's how narcissistic he is. And I just want to throw in with all this anti immigration uh, talk from him, two of his wives were immigrants. Well, and just all of the nonsense that in Project 2025, that they want to take away no-fault divorce. Right. And then you have like all of these people, Donald Trump's been divorced a couple times. I don't care if he has or not. It's a free country. It's not my business, but I'm not the politician running on family values. Right. And then, you know, having, um, playing patty cake with all these nuts over at uh, the Heritage Foundation that are incredibly dangerous, incredibly cruel, and they literally want and talk about a post-constitutional America. They say it out loud and they put it in writing, but there's a whole percentage of the population that do not know about this. I asked the woman yesterday that we were talking about politics lightly, do you know about Project 2025? She said, all I know is that Trump has nothing to do with it. <gasps> That's how ill-informed and how much mis misinformation is going on over there. But it tells you how successful yes. the gaslighting at Fox News is, that it is successful. They are successfully gaslighting and making carve-outs for Project 2025. Donald Trump, that's wildly entertaining, him playing show and tell with Cheerios and all that crazy stuff. Everybody needs to remember he is a Trojan horse for very bad actors behind him. He's the easiest person on the planet to manipulate. Putin manipulates him by saying, oh, my God, you're such a great leader. And then right. Trump's like, oh, my God, I love Putin. Right. Project 2025 is like, you know what? We've we tried to get Reagan to ban abortion. We tried to get uh, Bush. You're the only one that could do it. You're the only one that could do it. And he's like, oh, my God, these people love me. Right. It's that easy to manipulate him. That's why he is the Trojan horse for domestic problems and international problems. Absolutely. All right, listener and viewer, please subscribe to our show on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. It helps us more than you know. We are heading to Chicago to the DNC. We're probably going to drop two to three hot takes per day. So stay tuned. Make sure you write us a review. And we are so excited to cover the DNC. We have some very special guests lined up, so you're not going to want to miss it. It's so good.